Hey, what's going on guys? Mark here, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. If there's one thing for certain in car audio, it is that there are a ton of different terms and words that we need to know the meaning of. In this video, I'm gonna be going through over 40 different terms here. Some are slang, some are acronyms. I'm going to give you guys a ton of knowledge because I remember when I was new to car audio, it was really hard to follow along with what people were talking about because I didn't know so many of these terms. Here on this channel, I do review videos, I do build log videos and I also do knowledge videos like this one. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. So without further ado, let's get on into this, the terms that you need to know. So the first term we're gonna talk about here has to do with amplifiers and speakers and that's Watts RMS. So RMS stands for root mean square and what it is is really just a representation of the continuous power output of an amplifier or the continuous power handling of speakers. Sometimes amplifier manufacturers will list a watts RMS or continuous power output along with a max power output. The quote unquote max power output isn't even worth worrying about because it's kind of an unrealistic representation of how much power that amplifier is actually putting out. Again, you wanna focus on watts RMS. On this amplifier, it doesn't even list a max power because again, that's unrealistic. You can see that it lists the power rating in continuous power, we can see we have 800 watts at four ohms or 1500 watts at two ohms. A similar case for speakers, these are rated at 120 watts RMS constant power. So if we were picking out a amplifier for these speakers, we'd want something that does 120 watts RMS. Now next up, a crossover. What is a crossover? That's a crossover right there. Let's get it out. This is a crossover and this would be connected between the amplifier and the speakers. What's important to understand about music is there's different frequency ranges. A lot of you guys, I'm sure, are familiar with what a subwoofer is. So a subwoofer covers the low range frequencies, then we have like mid-range speakers that cover the middle range, and then we have tweeters that cover the high ranges. The crossover's purpose is it blocks certain ranges of frequencies that you don't want to go to your speakers. The reason we need a crossover is speakers are designed to only play a certain range of frequencies. For instance, we're not gonna play subwoofer bass with our tweeters it would actually destroy them. And in turn, we wouldn't wanna play high frequencies through a subwoofer. We don't wanna hear the vocals or anything through the subwoofer. The subwoofer can't play as accurately if it's trying to also play the high notes and the low notes. So the crossover has different types of crossovers built in. Before we start talking about this chart, I wanna talk about the word Hertz, which is the unit of frequency abbreviated HZ. Hertz is basically how many cycles per second are occurring with a sound wave. So if we have a speaker that is playing at 20 Hertz, that means it's only going up and down 20 times a second. A 20 Hertz sound wave would be low. It'd be like bass, like subwoofer bass. In contrast, if we had something like, let's say an 18,000 Hertz note, it would be moving literally 18,000 times a second. It'd be a very high pitched note. And just a side note, Hertz is also the name of this cute guy right here. What's up, Hertz? But now that you know what Hertz means as far as cycles per second, we can move on to understanding crossovers. Right, bud? That's a good boy. A low pass crossover is something you would use for a subwoofer. The low pass crossover would have a value, something like, let's say, 80 Hertz. So what that means is it's going to allow anything below 80 to go past. It's a low pass crossover. Next up is a band pass crossover. This is basically a combination of a low pass and a high pass crossover where it only allows frequencies between a certain range. This type of crossover would be used for something like a mid range speaker. You don't want subwoofer bass going to it and you don't want the high notes that are going to the tweeter going into it. Thus, you're going to limit to a certain range band pass crossover. And finally, we have a high pass crossover. It's gonna let everything above a certain value go past. This is for something like tweeters. Now you may have heard the term before, full range. What that means is our human hearing occurs from something like 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. So a full range signal means a signal that encompasses from 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000. That's full range. Another term that relates to crossovers is roll off. Roll off is basically how quickly these frequencies are going to fall off. So with a low pass crossover at 80 hertz, how quickly is that drop off going to be? Are you going to be able to hear stuff at 100 hertz still, or is it going to be much more quiet? So in other words, this would be a pretty steep slope roll off, whereas this would be 
not as steep. Now it's gonna kinda of seem like we're jumping around, but I'm just trying to cover different things on my list. So let's go to these speakers here. These are what's called, you may have heard this term before, component speakers. What does component mean? Component basically means that each of the speakers is separate from one another. So we have a mid-range speaker, we have our tweeter, which is separate, they are components. The opposite of a component set is what's called a coaxial set. In a coaxial speaker, you would see the mid-range speaker combined with the tweeter speaker into one convenient speaker, that way you have one mounting location. That makes it easier to install, but it's not always the best for sound. With component speakers, we don't have a tweeter sitting up here in the middle of the mid-range kind of blocking those sound waves. So generally speaking, to achieve better sound, a lot of times you'll see guys using these component speakers. Now something you may have heard about in reference to component speakers is running active or running passive. Running passive basically means that you still use this crossover. You would connect this between the amplifier and the speakers. Running active means that you don't use this crossover. You would connect your speakers directly to the amplifier, but you're still gonna obviously need some sort of crossover. Instead, you would use the crossovers built into the amplifier, or you would use something like a digital signal processor. So why do people choose to get rid of the crossover that comes with the speakers? Well, this thing does use up a little bit of the power, and it also doesn't allow us any tuning flexibility. Now, yes, this particular crossover does have some flexibility in it with switches so that you can control the slopes of the crossover and some other things, but generally speaking, you have a lot more flexibility with something like a DSP. Wait, 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 Mark, I don't know what that is. What's a DSP? We're gonna get into that in a second, but real quick, another thing on the speakers is you may have heard the term two-way or three-way. Two-way or three-way is basically referring to how many different speakers are part of that component system. So this is a two-way set because there's one, two speakers per side. And a three-way would be something where it would combine a tweeter, maybe a smaller three-inch mid-range speaker, and then this woofer. That would be a three-way. You would have six total speakers for your three-way setup. Okay, so back to DSP. What does that stand for? Digital Signal Processor. This device connects between our source unit, so something like a CD player or a radio Radio, it would connect between that and our amplifiers. Why? Well, this thing has a bunch of processing capability built into it. One of the first things we can control crossovers giving us tuning flexibility. Something else that we can control is what's called time alignment. When I'm sitting here in the vehicle, this speaker is actually much closer to me than that speaker over there. So what I can actually do is I can delay this speaker so that the sound from both sides arrives to my listening position at the exact same time. So that is what people are talking about when they talk about time alignment or time delay. Next up is we have the ability to control what's called an equalizer. So how would you use the equalizer? Well, you would use something like this. This is an RTA or real-time analyzer. This allows us to measure the frequency response output of our sound system. It does so using a microphone. As you can see, it's actually picking up my voice as I'm talking right now. On our system, we would play something called pink noise. And if we had a completely flat response, all of these dots right here would be completely level on this line going all the way across. The way we can tune our equalizer that's built into our DSP is we use a tool like the RTA to see each of these frequencies and adjust them on the equalizer. When we make those adjustments, we'd be adjusting the level. The level is kind of just a way of saying the volume, so either how loud or how quiet something is. So there's a couple of other terms we should talk about that relate to the DSP and tuning, or that's a word right there, tuned. What does that mean? If somebody's saying that you need to have your system tuned or they tuned their system, that basically means that they used different devices like a DSP or the different settings on their amplifiers or other external devices that control the signal they tuned those for optimal sound. Another word is staging. Ideally, when you're sitting in a vehicle listening to your sound system, you want there to appear to be a sound stage in front of you. And what that means is basically, if the original recording was recorded with the drummer in the back center, and let's say there's a singer off to the right and another singer off to the left, the way your sound system portrays that recording should match the way it was recorded. If you had a vocalist that was recorded in dead center of the room or the stage, you should hear them in dead center of the stage. That is staging. Staging also applies to depth, how far or close that sound appears to be. That's more of an advanced topic. Speaking of getting more advanced, if you want to learn more about tuning a DSP, check out the video up here in the corner of the screen. Another term, high level and low level. A high level input basically means speaker level. So if you were connecting the signal that you need to send into this amplifier, 
straight out of like something like a factory head unit, that would be a speaker level or high level input. Low level input would basically be an RCA input. That's if you're gonna connect something like an aftermarket head unit using RCA wires directly into the amplifier for the signal. Now maybe I confused you guys just now, what is a head unit? A head unit is basically the source unit. This would be the unit in your dash that is playing the music. You can put a CD in this, you can connect an iPod, you can play MP3s, you know, satellite radio, normal radio. This is a head unit. Now maybe you've heard the term single DIN and double DIN. What does that mean? Well, that relates to the DIN size of the head unit. This right here is a double DIN. A single DIN is about half the height here, so it would be a much more narrow record Rectangle. So I'm sure everyone knows what an mp3 file is. What is a FLAC file or FLAC? FLAC stands for free lossless audio codec. MP3 is a type of codec, so FLAC is just another type of codec. It's basically the way that information is stored for an audio track. With a FLAC file, it is a much larger file, much more high definition. In general, if you can get a head unit that plays FLAC files, they sound a lot better. Now let's take a look at the vehicle here and talk about more vehicle related terms for car audio. First of all, maybe you've heard the term A-pillar speakers. What you have to understand is with a vehicle, there are multiple different pillars. So this is the A-pillar right here. This is the B-pillar. And then this right here would be the C-pillar. Now, if you had a larger vehicle, something like an SUV, where this continues to be a storage area, you would even have a D-pillar back here. The reason the pillars are important is they designate the names of different types of speakers speakers that we like to install. So this is a custom A-pillar speaker. Why would I mount a speaker here in my A-pillar? Well, it has a much more direct path to my listening position. It's not going to be blocked by the center console or by my legs like a door panel speaker would. And in general, I can get the sound stage to appear to be much higher and much more accurate to the recording. Now, maybe you've heard the term wall. This is more of an SPL related term. To wall a vehicle basically means that right here behind the driver's seat, we would build the entire back seat to be a subwoofer enclosure. This would be if you're using very large subwoofers, you know, a couple 18s, couple 15s, that type of thing, and you want to completely turn the back of the vehicle into a subwoofer enclosure, that would be walling it, which gives you obviously a lot more airspace to work with, a lot more volume. So if somebody talks about a B pillar wall, what that means is their wall is lined up with the B pillar. Now in an SUV or something like that, maybe they wanna keep their back seats for people to sit in, so they would have a C pillar wall. It would be behind the back seats. So we talked about walls. Let's talk about different types of subwoofer enclosures. The first is a sealed enclosure. Sealed basically means that this enclosure that these subwoofers are sitting in is completely sealed off to the outside environment on this side of the subwoofers. That airspace behind the subs is completely sealed. Now a ported subwoofer enclosure means that you're gonna have a hole somewhere that is ported to the outside air environment. Now don't get confused though, it doesn't literally mean that I can just literally cut a hole in this and now it's ported. That port has to have a certain length, it has to have a certain cross-sectional area to be tuned correctly to a ported tuning frequency. To understand a little bit more about what I mean, check out this video up here where I build a ported box. Now there are also other styles of boxes like a fourth order bandpass or a sixth order bandpass. Basically for a fourth order bandpass, you're gonna combine a sealed section with a ported section, and then a sixth order bandpass would have a ported box basically on both sides of the subwoofer. Now you may have also heard the term infinite baffle. An infinite baffle would be, imagine if we put a piece of wood where the rear seats are in this vehicle here, and we actually mounted the subwoofers to those rear seats, that would be called what's considered an infinite baffle. In other words, the trunk, when we close it, is now going to act as sort of an enclosure for the subwoofers. Now while we're looking at my install here, you may have heard the term distribution block. What does that mean? Well, a distribution block is basically a way of distributing power from a main power source, something like batteries. As you can see, the power comes in here, distributing that power to multiple other devices. So you're distributing to the amplifiers, to this separate fuse block. That is a distribution block. Now, what about this stuff here? What is this? This is sound deadening. Sound deadening, which is what it's commonly referred to, I like to refer to it more as sound treatment because there's different steps to the process. This is 
is basically a material that we apply inside the vehicle to stop vibrations that steal acoustic energy and also to make it quieter inside the vehicle so we can hear more of our speakers rather than road noise and other noise occurring outside the vehicle. For wires, you may have heard the term zero gauge and four gauge and eight gauge. What does all that mean? Well, the smaller the number, actually the larger the wire. So zero gauge wire is large, a little bit smaller is four gauge, a little bit smaller than that is eight gauge. And as you keep going up 10, 12, 14, 16, it keeps getting smaller and smaller. So you're generally gonna be using zero gauge, four gauge, eight gauge for something like powering your amplifiers. And then for speaker wire, you're gonna be using something smaller like 12 gauge, 14 gauge, that type of thing. Now back to amplifiers, you may have heard people talk about gain. Oh, you blew your speakers because your gain was too high. Gain is basically a way of adjusting the sensitivity of your amplifier to input from the volume control on your main source unit. This is not a volume control. There's a special way to set this. I actually made a video all about tuning an amplifier. You can check it out up here, but do not adjust this if you've had it professionally done by a car audio shop. Even if your friend says that you'll get more output, all you're gonna do is blow your speakers. Let's hammer through some more acronyms. DMM, which stands for Digital Multimeter. This is a must-have device if you're installing your own system. This allows me to measure voltage, resistance, current, really a must have device so that we can make sure everything is working as intended. So what about DB? Well, DB stands for decibels. It's basically a logarithmic unit of measurement for acoustics and electronics. If we look closely here, we can see DB per division. So DB SPL basically means how loud something is. If it has a higher DB, it's louder. If it has a lower DB, it's quieter. What about SPL and SQ? SPL stands for sound pressure level. So basically, if you were an SPL guy, you'd be the type of guy that has, you know, as many subwoofers and as much power as possible in your vehicle so that you can have the highest SPL output measured when measuring on an SPL meter. SQ stands for sound quality. So if you are a sound quality guy, you're still gonna have subwoofers, but you're not as concerned concerned about creating as much output as possible. You're more concerned about reproducing the music as accurately as possible. Now you may have heard of another term called SQL, and basically these are the type of guys that wanna have a ton of bass, but they also wanna do their best to make it sound as good as possible. So it's not the best of both worlds, but kind of more a balance between the two worlds of sound quality and SPL. My friends, it's all about trade-offs. If you wanna learn more about balancing out your system, check out the video up here. So what other terms do you think could be added to this list? Or what other terms are you unsure of? Let me know what you guys think. I put a lot of time into making these videos, so if you guys enjoyed this one, if you could just take a quick second to hit that like button, it'd mean a lot to me. And in the meantime, you can check out some of my other videos here on screen. As always, a special thanks to John, Brian, Ali, Steve, Emmanuel, and Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to those guys for helping support the making of these videos. If you guys want to learn how to join the team, you can check it out down below. As always, my friends, thank you guys for watching.